All praise to the Most High. We give uh, all praise to the Most High for allowing his son to die for our sins, to die for the nation of Israel. He was sacrificed to give us a chance to get the kingdom. And we ask that in our uh, repentance that he gives us mercy. He gives us mercy. And he is truly a wonderful God. And, and uh, for him giving his... Uh, Giving his son for us is, is you can't even imagine the gift that the Lord has in terms of loving this nation of Israel. Um, one of the things that, well, what was it, last, was it last week? I was here last Sabbath. I'm up there mix, mixing things up. I was here last, it was, maybe it's the Sabbath before then, right? Yeah, I was here last Sabbath. The Sabbath before then, I was in uh, San Diego, and I went um, and went and dealt with a subject about brothers and sisters that be in this truth, and they make excuses, and meaning excuses for why they don't stay in the gospel. And so the question came up. It wasn't pointing to anybody in particular, and neither is it pointing to anyone in here. But the question came up about uh, why is it that people get weak, meaning in the congregation, and whose fault is it, so to speak? And I was making the point that when the people come in, the people are looking to be led. The people are looking for direction. They're looking for leadership. And if they don't find it, or if the, or if the leadership don't paint a vision for the for the uh, people to, to actually follow and to be led, then they're going to wander. Their spirits are going to go somewhere else. Um, if I come to the hospital, I come to the hospital to get healed. If anyone comes to a hospital, they're looking to get healed. So there's a reason why people come. Same thing as when people come into a congregation. And one of the points that I wanted to make was that whenever whenever I'm talking to a group of leaders, or let's say I'm speaking to to the uh, captains or the officers or who's ever uh, in front of the body. And I said, if the members seem to not be interested, you got to look at what's happening at the table. It's the job of the leaders to actually paint the vision for the people to see. Because they're not just coming in here because they don't have anything else to do. There's a billion things that our people could be tied up in rather than coming in here or coming in front of your congregation. So whenever there's a situation where people be like, you know, well, I wonder why so-and-so this way, and they seem like you got to really m muscle the people to get this done and to get that done. And I said, well, if you have to have to go through those links, maybe you, maybe you have to put the, put the vision out there for the people to see it. So that was what I taught about last week, I mean, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, let me just ask this question. What causes slothfulness? Who can answer that question? Let's get some. Who? What causes slothfulness? Shalom. Uh, lack of discipline. Lack of, okay. So you're speaking on part of the person. The person, right. When you say lack of discipline, meaning the person themselves. Yes. Okay, that's good. Anyone else? Lack of, lack of discipline. We'll come back to that. Uh, Shalom, Brother Joshua, uh, fear. Fear, okay. Actually, I heard that when I was in San Diego. This brothers gave that same one. Uh, the other one was, what, what did you say, my brother? Uh, discipline. discipline. Did I hear that one? Yeah, I did hear that one out there, too. Y'all all right. Somebody else. Shalom, most high Christ. Shalom, most high Christ bless. Um, too much idle time? T idle time, heard that one, too. That's correct. Idle time. So let's let's write these things down. Idle time, uh, lack of discipline, and fear. Right? Let me make let me make a mention of that. This class is not going to be long. Obviously, I thought that started an hour ago. Uh, it looked like we were in between a whole lot of other things. But someone else. Uh, most high Christ bless brother Benjamin. And brother un Benjamin, an unstable man. An un okay, an unstable man. Meaning he's he's unstable, right? Yes. He himself. Okay, uh, that can cause slothfulness too. Shalom leadership. Okay. Uh, family. 
Is that family? Yes. Okay, and family. Okay, now let me take all five, because all five of those is basically pointing to the self, right? Pointing to, because you, you say, when the brother, one, one, of, one of you said fear, meaning that the person themselves have the fear. Uh, the person themselves also lack the discipline. The person themselves have an issue with being idle. Now, remember what I said earlier. I said about people coming into the hospital, right? Right? When people come into the hospital, they may come in with fear. They may come in with discipline, with uh, lack of discipline. They may come in with a, a sense of idleness. They may be unstable and family. But what would cause the people to become slothful and give excuses for why they don't remain in the hospital? What would keep the people from staying in the hospital? Because all of the things that y'all gave are things that the individual will have within themselves, right? Uh, lack of trust. Okay, trust is getting there. Let's let's stay with you for a minute. La la lack of trust in what? Um, if we're in the hospital, um, if they you don't feel like they can heal you, uh, they're not hearing you, or they're not leading you to um, get into that. You're point. getting exactly to the point that I'm bringing. Yes, sir. You're getting exactly you hit it right on the head. That's the that's where the leadership have to have to think about how the medicine is being dispensed. You dig it? Yes, sir. There's a certain level of medicine that the leadership have to give to alleviate the fear. There's a certain level of 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 discipline that the leadership have to give to rem to to increase the discipline in the patients, so to speak, in the hospital. Everybody's with me. Their patients are idle. Whose fault is that? It's the fault of the doctors. It's the fault of the people that run the hospital. You dig it? Because the people came, to, the people came in. Can you dig it? The people come into the hospital to get well. And if, and if their excuses for not receiving the medicine is fear, distrust, <laughs> uh, lack of discipline, idleness, unstable, and family, that's something that the hospital have to address for the good of the people. Can you dig it? Y'all all right? So this was one of the things that I was talking about in San Diego. So I, I'm going to have to at some point make a deeper class out of this because I know time is, is short today. But this was one of the things that I've been giving some thought over. Um, give me Proverbs 29 and 18. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If the leadership does not provide the vision for the people, because the people are coming into the hospital, they want to get well, but they don't know exactly what kind of medicine they need. The only thing they know is that I know I need this because it's better than where I came from. But they don't know exactly where to go. Y'all follow what I'm saying? The job falls upon the leader. The leader, that's the reason why he's called the leader. Can you dig it? He's called the leader because his job is to take the people who need to be led and lead them to where they are benefited, to give them the medicine to make them cure. I go to the doctor. I know I'm hurting here, I'm hurting there, but I don't know what kind of medicine I need. They have to examine me and find out what's needed. And once they find out what's needed, then they give me the medicine. And then I, I say, I don't know what, I don't know exactly what I needed, but I know it fixed me. Now I'm good. Can you dig it? The importance of leadership. That's the reason why I'm talking about this. And whenever our people don't get that leadership proper, you will begin to experience these kinds of things in the congregation and in people. Fear, distrust, idleness, all these things come up. So the job of a leader is to really be a real leader and deal properly with the people. Find out, you have to know the condition of the people. That's the reason why we have counselors. That's the reason why we have brothers. We set brothers over certain brothers, sisters over certain sisters, things like that. Because the objective is, is to be able to properly guide them to where they need to be. You dig it. 
and the medicine has to be the Bible. Can't be nothing else. Got to be the scriptures. You got if you ain't giving them this, they're gonna go because they didn't come. They didn't come in here to look at my pretty face. You know I ain't got no pretty face, right? But you dig what I'm saying, right? They're not coming here because they want to see Dick and so or, so or Bishop that or the, no. They're here because the people needed it because they were sick out there in the world. And they come in here to get God's word, and that's what we have to give them. We have to give them God's word. So one of the things that I wanted to uh, make a point about with time running, I wanted to make the point about that as we as leaders do our best to give you the medicine that you need, you yourselves are going to have to in turn take this medicine and heal the rest of your people. You follow me? That's the purpose of us coming in here. And when I came in, I used, I used to sit in those seats too. So I had to learn X amount of, of information so that I can get up and then I can teach the rest of my brothers and sisters and so forth. So this is going to happen with you. Now the question is, do our people need to be led? I'm going to jump gears a little bit because I know I was going heavily with this topic and that's like I'm on a roll with it. And I know it's going to be hard for me to jump off of this and jump on to something else. But I did want to show something else. But read the scripture again. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Where, the, where there is no vision, the people perish. That's the job of the leader to examine. Read it again. Where there is no vision. So if the leadership do not paint a vision, do not paint direction, do not give, do not instruct discipline. Do not uh, 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 bring in stability to make, to make you feel stable for you to learn and for you to take what's being taught to build you up. If the people, in, if, if the leadership don't give that to you, how could you be these things? And if the people don't get that, they perish. Read it again. Where there is no vision. The people perish. Where there is no vision, so the vision has to come from the leader. The vision has to come from the leader. We're going to come back to this. I'll give you another example. I'll show you how important this is. Give me the book of Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. I have made thee a watchman. A watchman is a leader. So oftentimes you have people that, 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 that try to uh, run in a race to be a leader. That's not, that's not something to take lightly. Because as you're going to read here, it's a very serious uh, position to be in. You're dealing with people's lives. You're dealing with families. You're dealing with, 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 with women, men. You know, what you say goes a long way. So you have to be careful in the medicine that you're dispensing. You give them the wrong medicine and you can send them in the wrong direction. And that, and if you send them in the wrong direction, they're going to sue the doctor, so to speak. You dig what I'm saying? So we have to make sure that we deal properly with the people. Okay, read. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Go ahead. Therefore, Hear the word at my mouth. Therefore, tell the people the words that I tell you to tell them. So this is not necessarily our vision per se. The Most High says, I, I charge you leaders, I charge you watchmen to watch over the people. And you give them my words. Because we, we leadership, we didn't create you. God created you. And if any of us are going to be put in charge of God's flock, you better recognize that they're God's flock and they're not our flock, so to speak. You dig what I'm saying? So we have to be, we have to make sure that whatever we bring down to the people got to come from the most high. You dig it? If the people can sense that, you're not going to have a problem where people are going to be fearful, where they're going to have discipline issues because they're going to recognize that you're bringing them the word of God. That's where the trust comes in at. You won't have to distrust. You won't be idle because there's things in the Bible that tells you how to dispense um, uh, administrations. But you have to examine the people to learn where to put the administrations at. So by, uh, by, by having that, that connection and that conversation in the congregation, you find out what people's weaknesses are. You find out where their strengths are. You find out where their talents are. 
where they need to be built up, where they're strong at. You find all of these things out. And then you can, then you paint, you give, you lay down the vision and begin to put the people in their, in their departments. And now we all have purpose because the departments that you end up going in or the services or the talents that God given you, he gave you those talents to use for his benefit. And if the people can see that, then the people have a sense of purpose. And the people know that I'm in the right place. Read. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So a leader has to know the danger that the people don't know. Again, another serious position for a leader to be in. He has to know the prophecies. He has to know the danger and have to be able to properly instruct the people to clear them of the danger that's coming. Literally, the watchman in the, in the past was a man that stood on a tower and looked over to see if the enemy was coming towards the camp. He sees it, but the people that he's looking out for, they don't see it. But if he doesn't, if, if he doesn't warn the people and prepare the people for what's coming and the people get wiped out, who are they going to blame? Huh? They're going to blame the watchman, the pilot that's flying in the plane. He's got the plane. He knows what's in front of him. The people on the plane, they're, not, they, they're trusting him. But if he does something wrong with that plane, that plane goes down, who are they blaming? They're blaming the pilot. So, yes, certain people that are coming, they're coming for different reasons. But if they're coming in for the right reasons, and if they came in with the right reasons, then let's say they did have fear. Let's say they did have discipline issues. They were idle, uh, you know, and uh, unstable and things of that nature, which will cause them to be slothful. But in spirit, they want to be right. So the leader has to find out how to address those points to build them up so that they can be what God need them to be. Okay? Um... I'm going to jump gears because this is going to get into a whole class, and I ain't going to get nowhere near finished it. So I'm going to jump gears. Y'all all right so far? I saw something on – I'm going to go into my video. I'm switching gears now. Last night on the radio program, we were talking about the needs of oppression. What was the name of it? The, tra the traumatizing needs of oppression upon our people, right? I don't know how many how many of y'all did not see it or watch it. Okay, I can't even see. Can you see the hands? I'm just trying to gauge a, get a gauge of. Okay, so the rest of y'all saw it. All right, all praise to the Most High. One of the points that I that I was trying to make in that in that uh, video was that our people need help to see the family of George Floyd, to see the family of the Browns. Uh, you know, you got the, the even Bland family. You have when I say the Bland, uh, Sandra Bland. You had uh, the sister from New York, um, uh, the brother with the cigarettes. Rich, what was the name? Garner. Yeah, Eric Garner. You know, our people are suffering, and at some point, the leaders gonna have to deal with them. You had the church leaders that's trying to deal with them, and he made a point. I was there was a clip that I played. We had that preacher from North Carolina. And at the end of it, he said a lot of good things. But at the end of it, he said, we want accountability. Right? I'm going to show you something. Because as leaders, we have to know how to decipher the BS and give our people the facts in the Bible. Can y'all dig it? Play my video. Meet the press. This Sunday, after the verdict. Guilty, guilty, guilty. <laughs> The country exhales. It feels like we just got a breath of fresh air. And for the first time, it feels like we can breathe. I feel good. We got justice. But does Derek Chauvin's guilty verdict indicate real change? Or was it an isolated, high-profile event? The jury did its job. And hopefully, we here in the Congress will do our job and pass criminal justice reform. This morning, we'll hear what the verdict means to many African Americans. I was happy that the nation could see that there may be a change coming about. And I'll talk to Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. Okay, that was Baltimore. It. We ain't got to go that far. 
What do y'all gather from what y'all just looked at? I know people are like, well, why is he even showing this? I know some people don't understand why I'm showing this. Play it again. This Sunday, after the verdict. Guilty, guilty, guilty. The country exhales. It feels like we just got a breath of fresh air. Like for the first time, it feels like we can breathe. I feel good. We got justice. But does Derek Chauvin's guilty verdict stop right Derek there? Ch okay. You happen to you actually happened to stop right where I needed it. Put that sign up there again. Look what somebody put. That ain't Jake holding that sign up. <laughs> Do y'all see that? This when the when the news people were edited, because they have to go, you gotta think about it. The newsroom. This is Meet the Press, right? What was it? Meet the Press. This is NBC. Before they put something on television, the video editors, the columnists, the news writers, they have to go to a chief editor. Who said it? They have to go to a chief editor. And a chief editor says, you are allowed to put this in it. You're not allowed to put that in it. You're allowed to put this in it. You're not allowed to put that in it. Y'all all right? <laughs> so, now, I didn't bring this out last night. But I'm, Lord willing, I'm going to bring what I'm about to say out on the next one because I've got to talk about this thing. <sighs> Play it one more time. That's why, hey, listen, I'm kind of chopping the class all the way up like this here because time is running. You know, I know if I get into a long, drawn-out class and then teach half of it, what sense does that make, right? So I'm just getting little pieces, nuggets in this and that. Even the class that I was going into talking about slothfulness and excuses and asking the question about that, I didn't finish that either. But it's just giving you a little something as to the importance of leadership being able to properly deal with the people. So that's why I wanted to just give you a prelude to something that I'm going to deal with later on down the line. Everybody's with me? So now, in this case here, looking at... Uh, this thing here, and I talked about how the editors allow certain things and they don't allow certain things. Then last night on the uh, program, I mentioned something about uh, something called risk management. You heard me talk about that. Risk management is, is for those that, don't, that might not know, risk management is, is a, usually a department within a company that works with public relations. I didn't go this far on the set yesterday. That works with public relations that deals with the, rela the, the relations with the public. And they have to assess whether or not a particular action is going to be detrimental to the company or is it not going to be detrimental. And they have to weigh the risk. They have to manage the risk. If we take action A, X amount of risk will be assessed. If we take action B, Y amount of risk will be assessed. So they have to make a, de they have to make a decision. And they, and they make that decision based on the relationship with the, with the business and the people. You dig what I'm saying? You dig where I'm going? Like I said yesterday, when they did with, what's this guy named Chauvin? Risk management got involved. That, I'm, in the police department, it's not probably called risk management. In a lot of places it is. They got other names for it, but y'all follow what I'm saying. Every, every entity has some kind of... Uh, uh, I mean, every company has some kind of entity where they make those kinds of decisions, okay? Nothing but Edomites usually be in them offices. Negroes ain't no way around it. You dig what I'm saying? So they had to make a determination. If we say A and let, and let this man off, Chauvin, let him off, we're going to have the riots of L.A. all over this damn planet. So they said, what is the risk? Billions and billions and trillions of dollars? Or Chauvin, we just got to let your ass hang. Huh? Now, a lot of people don't like what I'm saying when I said that. But like I pointed out yesterday, initially, the police department said that this guy, Floyd, died later in the hospital. It had it not been for that camera because the video wasn't out yet. Y'all dig it. Floyd died that day. That video didn't hit the circuit then. The information that they recorded on their, on their reports was written from that day and said that he died later that day. So that would have been the official report. 
Then boom, the video comes out. Risk management got involved. Uh, yeah, we were going back you, but did you see this tape? Come in the office. Look at what you did. Now, we got away with Rodney King, but we can't pull that off twice. The man's crying for his mama. How are we going to sweep that under the rug? How are we going to deal with that? The, the off-duty firewoman wanted to give CPR. You said no. You reaching for your mace. That's all on tape. We can't help you. Police unions are very strong. Where are they at? That, like, like we said on that program yesterday, they got that call from up top. <laughs> His ass got to hang. You dig it? <laughs> Risk management. Play the tape. This Sunday, after the verdict. Guilty, guilty, guilty. The stop, the country. stop, 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 stop. Stop, stop. Guilty, guilty, guilty. You would think you're talking about black folk. <laughs> you would think it was a black man sitting in there, or, or a Hispanic man sitting in the chair. He trembling. <laughs> He's shaking. That's a cop that they got. They saying guilty. Then there was an, I don't know if it was the same report. Then they showed ten, a 10 year span. I showed it on the program last night. 10 year span of killings that police did on, on people for 2005 to 2015, thousands of cases. Not one of them was convicted. Zero. Zero. All the way across all the years. Now all of a sudden with this one, Guilty, guilty, guilty. What, what, what happened? What, what phone rang? <laughs> what changed? But our people. So I didn't forget my part about the editors. Y'all all right? Play the video again. This Sunday, after the verdict. Guilty, guilty, guilty. The country exhales. It feels like we just got a breath of fresh air. I feel good. We got justice. But does Derek show Chauvin- Stop right there. Remember I said a point about the editors? When that tape was put together, because this is, you, as you see, they're showing different clips. That's done in an editing room. You, when you put it, somebody, you know, you have a think tank on what should we put when we put this video together. Y'all all right? And... This particular editor that had this sign, put that sign up there again, accountability. When he, when he said, okay, I want to put this inside the video, the editor had to say, wait a minute now. I don't know if we can put that in there because that looks like these people but duped. You dig it? Because somebody wrote accountability, Negroes, is not justice. So we're busy crying. Even the preacher said it. We want accountability. And you think you think that their definition of count of accountability equates to justice. Black people ain't never going to get justice in this system. You want to talk about justice? What does justice mean? Somebody tell me. What does justice mean? Literally, what does justice mean? Who knows? Okay, let's see what just let's see what justice is, and to prove my point, when I said justice, and leaders are supposed to point this out because if the leader never properly addressed this, those people are going to continue to be misled, continue to be duped, and continue to get robbed. Somebody has to tell them the facts that listen, this is not your rest. Um, shalom. Shalom. Um, I, know, I know you said in the um, program yesterday, Revelation thirteen ten. Right. Oh, you like that? Yeah, like Brother's that. right on point. That is the answer. I would like to have others, but th- nothing beats that one. Because that's what justice really is. Thank you, brother. You're right on point. Let's read that thing. You may go hold up a sign talking about accountability is not, is not justice. But I'm going to get back to that, that, to that sign there because, like I said, when the, when the editors looked at it, because you have to put your stamp on it, they actually have papers that they have to sign when certain videos are released. They have to sign it and says, you know, it's approved by editors, such and such. And they have to sign it to say, 
this and they put it in the can. You know how they do. Uh, and this is it. And it's solid, ready to go. They got people to, if, if the video comes up as a question in the media or whatever, they'll pull those editors up and say, why'd you put this in? And they will have to answer that. Everybody's name is on that log. You'll follow me. It's very thorough how they do these things. They just don't run stuff out there. There's a lot of people involved. And when, by, by the time something hits television, over 100 people had to sign off on it, had to discuss it, think tanks, scrutiny, all kind of things happened before they put it up there. You follow me? Y'all understand what I'm saying, right? So somebody said, we can get away with this. Because they're saying that our intelligence is not that smart, is not that sharp. For them to be able to, because at, at the risk was, are you crazy? You really want to put that in there in the middle of this jubilance? Look at the, look at the black women. We got justice. Well, we can breathe. All that. Can you dig it? And then you're going to throw that in there. You just mess up the party. But, 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 but I, I wanted to put it in there. Uh, I don't think they'd catch on to it. Well, I don't know. Maybe, you know what, let's put it in there. And maybe they won't catch on to it. And perhaps they didn't. Y'all all right? Our people are in trouble. Serious trouble. Leaders are needed. Can you dig it? Play the video again. <laughs> One more time. And just watch how it just pops in. This Sunday, after the verdict. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Jubilance, the country happiness, like waiting to exhale, we can breathe, all of that. I feel good. All of that happiness, we finally, boom. That just came in and just messed the whole dream up. Just derailed all the happiness. Let's look these words up. Then we're going to read the scripture. You know what? Let's read the scripture first. Let's get God in there. Come on. Revelations <laughs> chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity. We're trying to find out what is justice. If we're talking about getting justice, because even Dr. King said it. Dr. King said a threat to justice anywhere. No, no, no. How'd it go? A threat of injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. In other words, if you have a little bit of injustice in your system or a little bit of leaven, you have no justice because injustice has a contagion that seeps into every aspect of your system. That's what King was making a point. Martin Luther King. Y'all all right? So either... We're in a just country or a just society or an unjust society. And if you don't know the difference between the two, you will mix accountability up with justice. Two different words. That's the reason why that was put up there. And somebody in the audience held that. Somebody with their camera thought it was newsworthy and said, well, let me get this clip. Even if they don't use it, I think it's worth getting. Snip. Went to the newsrooms. They were looking at it. Say, hey. Bob, on your camera, <laughs> we're going to use this and put that in here. And we're going to run it on the news, the news tonight. Then the editor have to say, well, I don't know, man. That thing goes against all of the exuberance. Then somebody else say, but these are Negroes you're talking about. <laughs> you might get away with it. The insult. All this kind of discussion happens in these closed air-conditioned rooms. Y'all all right? Play it again. This Sunday, after the verdict. Guilty, guilty, guilty. The country exhales. It feels like we just got a breath of fresh air. Like for the first time, it feels like we can breathe. I feel good. We got justice. But does Derek Chauvin's guilty verdict in Look how they just threw it in there. How they just threw it in there. Some of y'all really, if all of y'all are getting it, I know the majority of y'all are getting the point that I'm making. The slap in the face, bam. Uh, put up <laughs> accountability, please. The definition, accountability. That's the reason why that sign said what it said. They, they said, dang, they, now they mad at me. Huh? They mad at me. Go, go ahead. They mad at me. They said, here, you messing up our fun. You know they hate us. For you say, We're trying to be jubilant. We're trying to be happy. Here got this nigga in purple going to come up here and just mess up our day. 
Make us think that we didn't get. You dig what I'm saying? Some people might be looking at it like that. I'm using those terms because that's how they would refer to somebody telling them the truth. And, uh, uh, as opposed to the dream that they want to believe in. Don't wake me up, I'm dreaming. Here you come waking me up to reality. Go ahead. Uh, also, Kyle sent me a message, and he said, um, listen to the music and how cheery it is. He said triumphant. Yeah. And it, that's what's sucking people away. They ain't reading the words. They're just listening to the music. But the part that, that the part you, you want to catch on to what they did. You notice they got everybody told them to say, hey, we're going to make this announcement in a little while. Everybody was waiting. Stop working. They start looking at TVs. They was waiting. We're going to put their ass to sleep one more time. And they put everybody to sleep at one time. When they made that announcement, that's to put them all back to sleep. Uh, go to Isaiah 59 real quick. Because what Bishop is saying about leadership being necessary to bring out the fact that. Test, test. To, uh, to bring out the fact that the accountability is not justice, right? Because like the bishop was saying, the video's being played, the music's triumphant. We overlook what's really going on. The need for leaders to show our people what's really going on is necessary. Go to Isaiah 59, start at verse 7. Isaiah. This, now, uh, this is talking about Israel being rebellious. We have to show, show our people why these things are happening to our people, though, right? Read that. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Their feet run to evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. That's us. We make haste to shed innocent blood. We see what's going on with the gang killings and the things in our community. We see what's going on. That's the leadership's uh, uh, job to bring it forth to our people, right? Read. Their feet run to, to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Uh -huh. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. So our mind is sin, right? Read. Wasting and destruction are all in their path. Read. The way of peace they know not, uh -huh. and there is no judgment in their going. Meaning in our own communities, right? We're not judging our own people of the things that we're doing that's evil. Watch this, read. They have made them crooked paths. Uh -huh. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Now watch this, read verse 9. There, therefore. So because of that, therefore. Is judgment far from us. Judgment is far from us, read. Neither does justice overtake us. That's why he can hold that sign up. Accountability is not justice. We're not getting justice. But it's up to the leaders to bring that forth to our people so we know why. It's because our feet are in those evil paths. It's up to us to come back and repent and come back to the Lord because the justice that we're really seeking is what Bishop brought out in Revelation 13. Read that, uh, verse 9 again. Verse 9. Therefore, is judgment far from us. Uh -huh. Neither does justice overtake us. Uh -huh. We wait for light. We hope for that for that uh, that justice, like the sister was crying. Can right, can right. we can breathe. We can breathe. No, you can't. Because guess what? Somebody else has already died since this happened. Right. Been killed by police already. Read. We wait. We wait for light. Uh huh. But behold, obscurity. All we see is obscurity. Yeah. Death in our people. Right. That's happening at the hands of our oppressors. Read. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. But we stuck in that darkness. Read. We grope for the wall like the blind. Uh -huh. whoa, whoa. Behold, but behold, obscurity for brightness. Mm. That's the understanding. What they think is light is obscurity. They're exactly. confused. Yep. And the confusion is deep. I want you to keep going, but I want to make this point. Yes, sir. The confusion is so deep. The people that put this together know that we're the Israelites. Yep. They know that we are Isaiah 1 and 3. They know that. Give me that real quick. I'm going to come back to you. They know this. That man, that, that Caucasian hand that held that thing up. Somebody might say, nah, he's Ephraim. I don't know. <laughs> you understand? They, hey, they'll try to do anything to disprove the point. Yep. But the point is valid because if he was holding up, maybe he was like trying to wake up. But they said, but we're going to take the shot of that and make fun of the intelligence of your people. Yep. So rather that's Jake holding the sign or not. The point that it was been focused on and put in the middle of what was looking like a collage of exuberance. They said, we're going to put this in here to show you that you people are crazy as hell. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. That means we are a completely lost people, confused people that need some real leaders. Isaiah 9, 16. 
We need some real leaders, and this is what's wrong with our people now, and this is the reason why we are being groomed to be leaders so that we don't fall out because of fear, lack of discipline, being idle, unstable, things like this here. The leaders have to find a way to keep the people in, 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 uh, in the protective herd, like Christ was talking about when one of the sheep get lost, you got to go get that sheep back. That's what a shepherd does. To protect the flock. The sheep, the, the sheep don't know how dangerous the wolves are. But the wolves are trying to get there. But the leader knows. I got to make sure that I do certain things to keep these sheep together. So that they don't get destroyed by the enemy. The job of a leader. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Read. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 16. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. For the leaders of this people cause our people to suffer and mix Proper justice with obscurity. Their sense of justice is obscure, and they think that's the light. They think they've made it. They think that we can finally breathe. That's obscurity. And the enemy knows it. He said, I'm going to show you that you're, you're, you're in obscurity because I'm going to put this up there, and might five of you might catch this. Wow. Five of you might catch this. Can you dig it? That's a slap in the face. A slap in the face. I'm going to show you how much of a slap in the face. Because I don't think, I think, I, I don't know if everybody in the room is understanding me. Give me, go to the picture that I gave you yesterday that showed you the end of the deal. It's a picture. Now, like I said, the, the, uh, the, the laughter was upon us. We got justice. We can breathe. Justice finally came down. The Lord rained skill on these people because they love us. Risk management. That's what happened. Read. What did that say? Officers were able to get the suspect. And this was written. Well, it's going to be obvious that he finished reading it. As you notice, the silhouette behind it is cup food. So it's letting you know where this, where this is talking about. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Everybody's with me, right? Yes, sir. Read. Officers were able to get the suspect into Meaning George Floyd. Into handcuffs. So they got him into handcuffs. Go ahead. And noted he appeared to be suffering medical distress. Mm -hmm. Officers called for an ambulance. They did the noble thing. They didn't say nothing about the knee. Mama, nothing about that at all. He appeared to be under medical distress. That was the official, this was taken from the official report. Negroes was not going to get no damn justice. Let me just, whatever justice they think they got, they were not going to get it at all. So that decision for them to quote unquote get it came from the top. Read. Officers were able to get the suspect into handcuffs and noted he appeared to be suffering medical distress. Officers called for an ambulance. He was transported to Hennepin County Medical Center by ambulance where he died a short time later. Where he died when? A short time later. People saw him die there. Right there on video. But because video didn't exist at this point, the hell with what y'all saw with your naked eyes. We're going to write this, and this is what's going to go down. You see that? <laughs> so now let's go back to the video. This is why I say our people are in serious trouble. Because of the obscurity. They think that they're getting justice. That's not justice. That's not even accountability, to be honest with you. It's neither one. Play the video again. This Sunday... After the verdict. Guilty. 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 The when they heard that. Guilty. 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 Like God said it. <laughs> they got all happy. I can't believe it. We got justice. They had to get eight members from the police department. Eight. That came from up top. You had to have eight cops to, go to refute what they initially printed. And you telling me justice happened? 
Y'all getting this? It was not going to go down like that. It was not going to go down that way. They said, listen, white boy, that tape came out. That's what they told Chauvin. That tape came out. They said, listen, in light of this tape and what went down, the risk is you going to jail. We can deal with that risk. We can't go with the risk of having our cities torn up and burned up and all that. We can't have that. <laughs> go ahead. You was, go ahead, Captain. Go ahead. I'm going to lean back. I think I said, I, said, I said enough. Go on with it. <laughs> go back to Isaiah 59 and read verse 10. Isaiah- and that's crazy what you said, Bishop, because what that means is they had to have a think tank to decide whether to arrest somebody where we seen them kill them. They had to go back and talk and huddle up and say, all right, should we do this? Think about how, now let us do that in our own community. You're going to jail without thought. They don't even consider it. But because of how they're treating us and what's going on, our people don't even realize how, how, how much oppression that we're in. Y'all understand what I mean? Uh, read verse 10. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 10. You want to say something? No, no, no. Go oh, ahead. Go ahead. I was thinking about, you know. We, gro- we grope for the wall like the blind. Uh-huh. And we grope as if we had no eyes. As if we had no eyes. Understand something, like the bishop has been saying, the leadership has to bring these points out because do you think that they knew, or are people even consider that from 2005 to 2015, thousands of cases, no justice, right? Nobody got a guilty verdict. We just seen this one, and we forget about everything else. That leader has to bring forth the, the facts that, hey, this is always happening. And even with that verdict, it still might change because remember, they'll say guilty at first, and then at the sentencing, they might get 10 years, and they might get five years. They wait two to three weeks so you don't remember. Yeah. When the party is over. Right, right. When, when, when 4th of July come in, they probably pass the day. They give a sentence right at the 4th of July. Too, too late. Nick Rose will barbecue. Yep. They don't forgot. Yeah. So that guilty, it, it's, it's really not what you think is what I'm saying. So it's really not justice, right? Read verse 10 again. Verse 10. We grope for the wall like the blind, uh-huh. and we grope as if we had no eyes. We can't see what's actually going on around us. It's a trick bag. Guilty, guilty, guilty. You go right back to sleep, right? Read. Oh, look. If the people are groping like they have no eyes, and they're groping like the blind, how does the blind get to point A to point B? Mm. It takes a leader. Exactly. That's the point. That's the, that's the importance of you. Mm. You're going to have to lead these people. Yeah. Go Let's ahead. Finish that real quick. This is the last this is the only verse I got. We, we stumble at noonday as in the night. Uh-huh. We are in desolate place, places as dead as men. As dead men, as spiritually dead. I got to understand. That's the importance of that leader to bring, that, bring forth this understanding that that's not actually justice. That's why with that sign being held up, even though it's a slap in the face, it should be a wake-up call to our people. All right? But that's all I got, Bishop. Now let's put the words up there. Let's look up justice. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Give me accountability first. Because that's how I said it. Accountability is not justice. Let's look up accountability. Come on. Accountability. The fact or condition of being accountable, responsibility. That ain't enough. Hold it. Is there, is there something we can click to, to go further? Move down. Let's see, son. Let's move on down. Oh, uh, the meaning of accountability. Click that. Okay. Read it. Uh, What is the meaning of accountability? Webster's Dictionary defines accountability as the quality or state of being accountable, an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility for one's actions. Accountability doesn't mean punishment. (laughs) <laughs> Accountability is a willingness to accept responsibility for our own actions. Did y'all get that? The preacher said we want accountability. When you look at the preacher, the preacher from North Carolina, at the end of the clip, he said we want accountability. This is what he's asking for. Look at it again. Now, I ain't trying to get on Reverend Johnson, but I'm just making a point. For the leaders of this people call them, calls them to error, and they that, are, they that are led of them are destroyed. Grope with like they have no eyes. Read it again. 
accountability as the quality of or state of being accountable, an obligation or willingness to accept responsibilities for one's actions. Stop. Now, we're going to read the rest of that because I could just show you right there that accountability has not taken place. And I'm going to bring this out next week on the show, but y'all hearing a little bit of it now. In order for one to be accountable for the horrors that we as black men and black women suffer in this country, you just cannot focus on the quote-unquote police department. You follow what I'm saying? It's a whole conglomerate force that involves education, that involves media, that involves history, that involves uh, justice, economics. All of these things work together in unity, in tandem with each other to, to oppress and destroy and to mutilate us. So when you want to talk about accountability, you how in the world you're going to say that one party is accountable but the rest of the party that's implicit in it or complicit in it, that they're not accountable. You don't have any accountability until the whole, what did it say, one's action. The action is the whole system and all of the people that's benefiting from our death, that's benefiting from our misery. The prison industry, for an example. I just use that as an example. When a system is set up for your young kids to mess up in school, because he has no daddy at home. They say he got ADHD. Ain't no daddy at home. Can you dig it? He acts up. He goes to the, to the detention or the principal's office. Letters are sent home. Your son is this. Your daughter's that. Then they get a little label on them. Stigmatized. They become a problem child. Now they put them in special ed. Now all of a sudden he or she loses interest in school. They begin to fail. They don't, they don't graduate, so they can't get job A, B, and C. They got to go rob and steal. When they rob and steal, the law picks them up, take them to jail, and then the prison industry makes money off of your sons and daughters because of many services it takes to operate a prison, uniforms, cleaning agents. Mechanics, refrigeration, heating, all of these guys make money off of keeping that, that prison system operating. The lights, Con Edison, all of them. Well, what they got, Duke Power and all that. The gas, they run the heaters. All of these people make money. How is it that these people are going to make money if there's no black flesh in there? Who opens up a hotel and don't expect guests? Can you dig it? So our people are being funneled into this thing. So as they're being funneled into it, those, all of those components, education, media, movies, whatever it is, they all contribute to that. So when you want to talk about some damn accountability, all of them got to get it. Y'all all right? How are you going to leave that out and you talking about accountability? That's what that sign was talking about. But the sad part about it is that you think you got accountability. You didn't even get that. We're coming back to accountability. Now let's get justice. We got justice. Are people blind? Put justice up there. We're coming back to accountability. Let's read that thing. Justice. Justice. Justice, uh, just behavior or treatment. Meaning f what? The, look at the word. Fairness, fair play, equity, validity, justification, legitimacy. We read out of that Bible. Let's, let's read justice. Give me Deuteronomy 27, 17. Let's read, some, let's read an example of what justice would be. Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Curse be he that removeth his... Read it again. Curse be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. And all the people shall say, amen. What that mean? What that statement... That's a law in the Bible. What does that statement mean right there? Anybody? 
All right, come on. I believe that's where, um, uh, given that God already gave all of the nations a certain land, uh, that uh, since that time, those boundaries have been changed by okay. the powers that be on the earth. Okay, I can ride with you, but I'm going to go a little deeper, a little bit more than that, but thank you. Thank you. What the people are saying, they say, if any man decides to go inside another man's land and take his land from him, he is to be cursed. That's why it says, cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's, land, his neighbor's landmark. And all of the people are in agreement with that judgment. That's when it says, oh, and, and all the people shall say amen to that. We agree that if you take another man's land, cursed be he. So how in the world are you going to establish justice on land that belonged to the Native American Indians? You removed their landmark, and you want to talk about justice. Then you're going to set a building, the United Nations building, on top of the stolen land, and you're going to have a discussion about wrongs that's done to other countries, and the territory that the building is sitting on is stolen. Can you dig it? A hell of a deal, ain't it? Hey, Bishop. Yeah. I want to make a point real quick. Yeah. Uh, read verse 15 in that same chapter. Deuteronomy chapter tw 27 and verse 15. I want to ask a question to y'all brothers real quick. Watch this. Cursed be the man that maketh any grave, grave, graven or molten image. So stop right there. Now, he just read, what verse did we just read? 17, 17. right? Read it 17 one more time. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Okay, go back to 15. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image. So here's the question. What was the judgment for verse 15? It's using the same word, cursed, right? But what was the judgment for graven images, being in idolatry? What was the judgment? Death, right? So what would be the judgment for all of Esau? Yeah. Read 17 again. Verse 17. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say amen. Right. Going right with the bishop's point. Go ahead, bishop. So that's the point right there. So when our people talk about justice, our people don't know what justice is. That's the point. Put, now put justice back up there again. <laughs> justice. Just behavior or treatment. Uh, you got any more? Yeah, move down. There was this part in there that talked about that woman with the scales. Yes. Uh, the administration of the second one. The, yes, uh, read the, that. The, the administration of the law or authority and maintaining this. A tragic miscarriage of justice. Okay, jump down. That's what I want. That next one. The, per person, the personification. The personification of justice. Usually a blindfolded woman holding scales and a sword. What that mean? What that mean? They have the oh, they actually have the image. Somebody can you put the image up there real quick? I'm gonna end it because the bishop's gonna be on in a few minutes. Put the image. So there's no other class coming in here, right? This is it? Okay. Uh put the image with the scale with the woman. Black people talking about something we got justice. Lord have mercy. Therefore the law is slack and and justice never goes forward. It means that in that Bible. Again, we got to give our people the facts, not lie to them. Tell them straight up, this is not your rest. You ain't going to get no justice here. You got it? You found it? Let's put it up there. Take a look at this woman. She has a sword in one hand, and she has this, this, the balances of the scales to weigh wrong, rights and wrongs, and you notice around her eyes she has what? The, what is the blindfold supposed to signify? Huh? She's not what? Say it loud. Anybody? What is it? Go ahead. She doesn't see anything? What is it, what is it supposed to mean when she has that, that blinders on? Okay. 
Yeah, you ain't bringing it all right. You, 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 you hitting it, but I want you to hit it. Hit the nail in the middle. You, you, you hitting it on the side, and the hammer going. <laughs> you, you, you bent the nail. the nail. I want the nail to be driven into the wood. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Come on with it. Uh, not a leader. Huh? You're not a leader. Oh no! Come on now. What the the blindfold on the woman is supposed to mean? What? Yes, yeah, you don't see anything. But what is it? Supposedly, really, what it's really saying? Where's the mic? Is it on? They don't keep cutting it off. You brothers trying to? I don't know. Oh Lord, have mercy! Come on now. Oh, come on, go to the camp voice. Give me the put the mic down. Speak. Justice is blind. Blind to what? Blind to what? Because that's what he was saying. But blind to what? Oh, Lord. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on, David. Thank you. There was this, that's what they're really trying to say. It's like if you have a poor man and a rich man. If you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're right. And I don't see. I don't, I don't have a bias because I'm just looking at the law and I'm looking at the violator of the law and the one that's supposed to be protected. And I'm going to dispense the justice based on that. And I'm not going to dispense it based on the color of your skin. No accountability. Exactly. They're not accountability to nothing because all them shootings and nobody went to jail. Dylan Roof blow people away and he was arrested. Huh? Gave him food because he was hungry. George Floyd needed water. George Floyd needed air. I can't breathe. He didn't kill nobody. He had a $20 bill. Perhaps he didn't even know it was counterfeit and he dead. Choked to death. Because justice is blind? Hell no. Y'all all right? The man was running. They said the man, what's his name? Uh, Andrew Brown. We ain't seen the tape yet. We don't know what it's going to reveal. But if he end up getting a shot in the back of the head, what should Dylan Roof have gotten? Huh? Exactly. They should have had to reload the banana clips on him. Not just no nine millimeter. They had the banana. You know what I mean? Banana clips, right? The long ones. They should have had to unload that. So none but number hamburgers should have been left when they went to get them. But they gave him a hamburger. The hell is this? Lord have mercy. Jesus Christ. Good job. Are you hungry? Yeah, all that blood and sweat, man. You got to. We worked up a, a thirst. Worked up some hunger. Yeah, I'm hungry. Well, what do you want? Uh, have it your way. <laughs> Two off beef patties. Hold the sauce. You know. What kind of drink you want? I don't know. I think about it. Justice is blind. Yeah. Go back to the thing again. We'll end it. So this is not justice at all. Our people did not get justice at all. So the woman screaming out the out the window. Talking about some we got justice. That's not justice at all. Okay. Go ahead. Can I look up something? Yeah. Can we look up something real quick on Google? Um, just look up real quick. George, no, not George Floyd. Uh, Derek Chauvin sentence length. Look that up real quick. Should be. Um, just Google it, and then let's look at maybe like the first two. Two articles. While quick. you're looking at that, did y'all know that when they were beating the hell out of Rodney King, they had a rope around his neck? Did y'all know that? Yeah. I saw that in 91. So if he you tried to get up, they knocked him back down so they can continue to beat him. You might want to show that real quick, Bishop, if you got yeah. time. He showed it last night on the radio show, but y'all, yeah, yeah. He brought that thing out. Just real quick. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. I want to see the Google, though. I want to yeah. see it. Even though he was found guilty of, of three uh, three counts. Guilty, under, guilty, guilty. Go ahead. Under Minnesota statute, he's only been sentenced on the most. He, so he will only, he only. said he'll only be sentenced on the most serious 
one. Right. Yep. Read on. Second degree murder. Uh huh. While this. that count carries a max- maximum sentence of 40 years, experts say. Experts he, say what? He won't get that much. You see that? They already know. He's, n- he's not going to get the max. What? Read on. Watch this. They say that for all practical purposes, the maximum he would face is 30 years. And what else? And he could get less. Right. The maximum is 30. He might, well, he might get 10. Yeah, he might get 10. He might get 10. Yeah. With time off for good behavior, five. And so, him pro- hell, he might get probation. Yeah, that's true. That's possible. Hey, that image I sent of the Bible book of our fathers, put, put that one up there. I want to show you something. That one, um, and th- when I seen it, it kind of threw me back. I'm like, why in the world would they get Jesse Jackson? Out of all the people they can get to put in the picture, why would they get Jesse Jackson? See, this is what they want us to do. These, 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 they said, when Bishop was talking about it earlier, he was talking about this leadership that, that's here. You ought to be appalled if you vote for this system. Voting, all that stuff they try to get you to do, get a, that's a bunch of madness. And our people are at the front of this stuff. There's an image. Show, let's, let's, let's look at the image. Show them. And, and Ben Crump is the new black man handler. He going from family to family, cashing in on our people. There's Jesse back there. They got Jesse back there. Uh, you you got Corey. What's the other brother from South Carolina? You got you got all the these are these are the people that's 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 making bank off our people. They're making much money off of us. They even went got Jesse on this one. Uh, what's the uh, what's the other brother down there? All of them uh, are reverends. Why don't they tell them that they're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of? Why don't they do that? Read, read uh, uh, 56 and 10. That was the uh, precept I wanted to use. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 10. Read. His watchmen are blind. Jesse, all of them. Ben Crump, Al Sharpton, those that head up the, uh, our people, all of them are blind. Read. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They're not, they're not even telling us that we're the Israelites. They're not telling the nations that. Why won't they tell them that? Bishop just said, why won't they tell them? They have a right. Why won't they say so? Read on. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. And that's what they're about. These are leaders that you should not have not anything to do with. They'll show up at your house. They'll show up at your house if your son was dead, and they come to get the money. You know what's so sad about this here? We're not reading out of a Quran. We're reading out of the Bible, and these men are reverends. You dig it? So why is it? And y'all know we're reading the Bible. Everything that I read out of this Bible today has been out the Bible. They know about this. These guys have heard of us. They know about us. Why is it that they're not telling the people this? There's something to think about. For the leaders of this people caused them to error. That's why they won't read it, because it's talking about them. And it's a sad case. Sad case. Hey, Bishop, can I, can I play one clip? Yeah. It's on the Bible, the Book of Our Fathers. It's just it's 20 seconds long, something like that, maybe 15 but it's going back to accountability. You see, let's see how, how these people really feel about us after they murder our people. Y'all got it? Y'all got that video I just put up there? Go ahead and play that thing. Well, I've been on the road for 18 years. People know me. They trust me. I get a depth of information. I ask questions other people won't ask. Cop says, knock down, drag out, fight, cuff them and stuff them. Finally get home at the end of the shift and... Cop says, gunfight, bad guys down, I'm alive. Finally get home at the end of the incident, and they all say, the best sex I've had in months. You see that? Both partners so are very So after they just killed your brother, your father, your intent. uncle, go ahead, pause it. After they just killed your people, they go home and have the best sex they ever had in their life. No accountability. They have absolutely no accountability for the murder and the atrocities that they do against our people. They can't stand us. They hate our guts. They go home and have the best sex they ever had. Don't let that be one of our sisters in the bed with them. Oh, my goodness. Right. Hey, hey, don't be surprised. Come on, winch. 
I just killed a nigger today. I just got finished killing your brother. Come here. <laughs> you in. know? <laughs> and I'm ready. Hey, show the Rodney King thing, man. Let me show that. Because a lot of them didn't know about that string. That Rodney King video. Now, I remember there was a situation I read about. I was in New York at this time. Um, the, 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 this white couple, Edomite couple, white man, white woman, killed a black man and had sex on top of his dead body. That was an aphrodisiac. That turned them on. They got excited. Look at that dead corpse right there. Let's get it in. Natural born killers. I, I tell you, man, that's t- they were just telling on themselves with that movie. Y'all got it? Hit it. Dramatic videotape obtained by Channel 5 News shows what appears to be a group of LAPD officers beating a suspect. As soon as it hit the airwaves, it created a firestorm. Video recorded by a man named George Holiday from the balcony of his apartment in it showed LA. Did you notice the way he fell? Stop. Did y'all notice how he fell? But you didn't see how it happened until they showed the rope. Back it up just a little bit. You see, he was trying to get up. They're beating the hell out of him. What is he supposed to do? Just lay there? You're trying to get away from those beatings. These people know the psychology of terror. They say if we beat him like this, he's gonna try to get up. So you already have the rope around his neck. So when he tried to get up, just pull it a little bit, make him fall, and we could continue to beat him, and we will say that he was trying to attack us when he was trying to get up. That's the same thing they said about Brown. So when Brown was in his car, he had his hand on the, on the steering wheel, and when the police came up behind, when they started shooting at him, he wanted to move. He was supposed to move. He was trying to get away from the bullets. So they, it looks like he was being aggressive. It looked like he was coming against the police. But Dylan Roof wasn't aggressive. Huh? Dylan Roof wasn't aggressive. He was just tired and hungry, so let's give him a sandwich. Play the video. At the airwaves, it created a firestorm. Video recorded by a man named George Holiday from the Watch balcony this. of his apartment in Lakeview Terrace. You he saw that. LAPD Did y'all see how he was pulled? Keep playing it, and you will actually see the rope. King with their batons, you see it. And kicking him for how in the hell are they going to say that they could not control chase. that? King was on parole. Oh, stop it, stop it. How many cops you got out there? How in the world are they going to say they could not control him? That they needed to do that to him? How could they say that? You got like nine of them with guns. All of that. And they're going to say, we needed to do this. And they said he was, what they said? He was high on PCP. They said this in the reports. They said they were laughing and they said a gorilla in the midst. They was laughing at him. Calling him a lizard. This is on record. When they pulled the radio transcripts, all that was in there. They get in court. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Video had played. So Negro said, oh, hell no. Boom. L.A. went on fire. George Floyd. The people said, we already saw the damage back then. Your white ass going to jail. Said, we don't need this to happen again. And here go black folk. We got justice. Y'all all right? I ain't trying to make you mad. Okay. I ain't trying to stir you up. Y'all all right? I'm just giving you that reality. Because that's what the leader's supposed to do. Tell you the truth. So you don't go play with the wolf and get bit. We used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day. Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.